The relation and query columns both create links, where records are linked to other records. But the query column is much more powerful, allowing you to create complex relations where you might need detailed filtering, sorting, and limiting of data to then bring back exactly the records you need, either to show in the layout editor or use for further computations like rollups or lookups. And in fact, this is one of the most common uses for it. If you've ever used spreadsheet formulas like sum if, count if, average if, or v lookups, then the query column is how you recreate that kind of functionality in Glide, along with columns like the rollup column and the lookup column. Here we have two tables, inventory and categories. In the categories table, we actually have a relation column and a query column both doing exactly the same thing, just to illustrate a point. They're both bringing back things in that category. The relation column is just driven by one matching value, which is a match between a value in this table and a value in the other table. But the query column, even though it can do the same thing, is much, much more powerful and built differently. It allows you to go beyond relations with multiple filters based on criteria, not just values, and allows you to add sorts and limits all in one column. For example, we could add another condition here which filters only the items where the next assessment is on or before today, then sort by price and limit to just the top two items. This is a great example of how specific you can get with the query column. But let's break down now things from first principles. First, in the query column, we choose a source. Now, this can come from any table in our project, including big tables or SQL sources, or it can be a relation or even another query column. Here we'll choose our inventory table, and if we save out of this config, we'll be able to see every row from that table in every row of this table. In this instance, this isn't very useful, but we can now use filtering, sorting, and limiting to get exactly the results that we want. Instead of matching a value, like with the relation column, the filters in the query column let you work with criteria and multiple conditions, giving you much more control. Let's start by recreating the relation and then build from there. To recreate a basic relation in the query column, we'll filter where the category of each item is the same as this row's name. The this row value here in the query column is a very useful value, as it allows your query to update for every row, and we'll see this more throughout the video. So now we've recreated this basic relation, we'll add another condition, and this is where we can choose whether it's an AND or an OR condition. Let's say we want to find any inventory items in this category that don't have a stock number listed or a stock level listed. We can just say and stock is empty. What you'll notice here is that this criteria is not based on a matching value. The query column knows what data type we're dealing with here, in this case numbers, and so gives us operators based on that type. For example, we could use this is less than operator to now create a low stock alert instead. For example, if we pick the is less than and then put a custom value of 10, we'll see all stock items with a stock value less than 10. We can now do something with this info, like showing a running low on stock collection. Or if we were working with another type of data, we'd see operators to help us build filters for those, like dates or booleans. Finally, for filters, it's worth highlighting that this value here is the value that we're checking for. And it defaults to a custom value, but we can also choose values from either the rows that we're querying, the values from the current row, which we saw when we were faking a relation, or even values from the user profile. And this would be really interesting because it would make the query dynamic based on the user that was currently viewing the results of that query. Now, sorts and limits are much easier to understand. Let's say we want to find the most expensive item in each category. We'd simply change the sort to not be by the sheet's order, but by price and choose the direction. Now we see all the items sorted by price descending. And if we wanted to show the top one or two, we can just use the limit function to do this. So that's an overview of the query column. In the next section, we're gonna do a deep dive into some useful examples that will help you understand how to really leverage this column with other columns in Glide and open your mind to what's possible. This project is used by a sales team and we wanna find the total sales this year for each user. We'll start by adding a query column and selecting the orders table. Now we'll filter by the user's email in this row. So now we only get the orders sold by this user. For the next filter, we actually need the value of the current year. So to do this, we'll leave the query column and add a new math column and just put in the formula year brackets now and replace now with Glide's own value now. 
This will take whatever the current time is and output just the year. So this will always update to the current year. Now we'll add a filter where the year of the order matches the current year in this table, and we have our result. All we just need now is a rollup column to sum these records. We could also duplicate this rollup column to create the number of items sold this year, or even number of product types sold. Another very good use for the query column is the ability to conditionally check a range of dates. We'll start by creating a blank table, add a query column, and then bring in all of the orders from the orders table. Next, we'll add two user-specific columns, one for start date and the other for end date. And then we'll add two filters to our query. The first one, where the date and time of the order is after this row's start date. And the second, where the date and time of the order is before this row's end date. Now, whatever the range between the two dates that we put here will be used to filter the results in the query. And we can even build a screen around this and let users dynamically create their own queries and update this list. And because we used user-specific columns, it will be different for each user. <laughs>